Hey everybody, we're going to now look at the Keynesian model um, and we're going to look at the difference between the neoclassical self-correcting model and the Keynesian model and why it might not self-correct. Um, what we need to think about before we get started is the impact of model assumptions. In this particular model, the basic assumption is that wages have downward nominal rigidity, meaning that our wage rate will not move downward. It can move upward, but it will not move downward. Okay? So that downward nominal rigidity is going to play a big role in the thought processes of the Keynesians and why they believe the economy works one way, whereas the neoclassical or monetarist school believes it works a different way. So let's go ahead and let's put our economy into a recession. All right, we're going to do a demand side recession. So here we go. There's our new aggregate demand curve. We get a new short run level of national output and income, and we get a new price level, okay? So we can clearly see that we have a recessionary gap, and we can clearly see that we have a lowered price level. All right, so what's going to happen here is because we have this recessionary gap, what you're going to see is that with fewer businesses needing to produce output, the aggregate demand for labor is going to shift leftward. We don't need as many workers because there's not as much output to produce. So this aggregate demand for labor is going to shift leftward. So there's our new aggregate demand for labor. Now, what we think should happen here and I'm going to do this in a really light color. Hopefully you'll be able to see it, but it doesn't matter because this doesn't really happen. What we think should happen is this. We think we should get this wage rate here, and we think we should get that new quantity of labor right there. The issue, of course, is in this case, in the Keynesian model, sticky wage theory prevents this downward nominal change in wages. That doesn't happen. So let's see what does happen. Well, what does happen is that we find that wage rates stay the same. And so what we now need to do is say to ourselves, at this new wage rate, or excuse me, at this new level of the aggregate demand for labor, where do I hit my old wage rate? Right there. So, what we are going to see, and I probably should keep my colors uh, consistent here, what we are going to see in this case is we are going to see this become our actual new quantity of labor both, you know, demanded and, uh, in this case, supplied. Um, and the distance between here and here becomes our level of unemployment. Um, if you remember from Mr. Hall's class, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, um, th in this case, it would be demand deficient or frictional unemployment, or uh, Cyclical unemployment, excuse me. So cyclical unemployment as a result of changes in the business cycle. So this shows you the level of unemployment that actually is going to happen. This very light yellow shows what would happen if wages were flexible. But because of the Keynesian sticky wage theory, those wages can't drop and we wind up with an intersection of old wage rate, because it can't change, and new aggregate demand for labor curve, which creates this unemployment, okay? 
So without that fall in wages, we get this significant level of unemployment, but because the wage rates haven't fallen, we can't see the outward shift of short-run aggregate supply to move us back to our full employment equilibrium. In this particular case, in a demand-side recession, what the Keynesians would argue is that you need a demand-side solution. And their demand-side solution is to attempt to create the government as the spender of last resort. Use the government to move the aggregate demand curve back to the right. So we will do more with that piece of the pie um, in the next unit. But for right now, what we need to know is how and why can a Keynesian economy get stuck in a recession? It gets stuck in a recession because of the sticky wages that create the unemployment that can't allow for short-run aggregate supply to give us that outward shift to move us back to full employment.